The former British Prime Minister Tony Blair is answering questions at a public inquiry into the 2003 Iraq War. It's investigating the lead-up to the conflict and Blair's justification for helping America invade Iraq. 179 Britons died in a war which became deeply unpopular. And to speak more with us on that, uh, joining us from Paris is John Lachlan, the Director of Studies at the Institute of Democracy and Cooperation. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Lachlan. I'd like to begin by asking you whether or not this inquiry is a real search for the truth. Um, I think it is a search for the truth. Uh, of course, it doesn't have the powers of a court to compel witnesses, and it can't forcibly declassify um, documents, so its uh, powers are slightly restricted. But I think the members of it do want to get to the truth. And I think a lot of interesting truth has come out. Tony Blair today, for instance, uh, said that, uh, more or less admitted at any rate, that the basic goal of the war was regime change. Now, this is exactly what all his enemies have always attacked him for. And yet we have seen him today beginning to admit that, in fact, there was no distinction between the weapons of mass destruction issue and regime change, a distinction which he had done his best to uphold in the run-up to the war. But for so long, the reason that has been put uh, at the front of the debate is that there were, in fact, weapons of mass destruction. We now know that that is completely not it. Like you've just said, that Tony Blair uh, has brought that up. But did they go into specifics about why perhaps Bush and Blair were pushing for regime change? Uh, well, the, 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 the whole debate focuses on this issue of weapons. Uh, Tony Blair once, uh, in a moment of absence of mind, referred to them as weapons of mass distraction. And it was a very illuminating Freudian slip, because the whole weapons issue, which was at the center of Blair's propaganda for war, was indeed a weapon of mass distraction from the basic war goal, which was regime change. We know now from various sources, memoirs of people concerned, various documents that have come into the public domain, we we know that the Americans were pursuing regime change since, uh, probably since the beginning of 2001, since George Bush took office. Uh, the inquiry, as far as I know, hasn't thrown up any more information about this. But what it has, uh, I think, illuminated is the fact that Blair, uh, for Blair, regime change was indeed the goal. Uh, but he specifically denied that at the time. He specifically said only a few days before the uh, war was launched that Saddam Hussein could remain in power if only he agreed to disarm. And on that, as on many other things, Tony Blair was clearly lying. And also, a lot is being made of this 2002, I believe it is, meeting in Texas between Blair and Bush. Uh, are you implying, perhaps, that maybe during that time they could have agreed about this, that Bush perhaps could have pushed really on Blair at that moment? Uh, I don't think there's really any serious doubt about it. Um, Blair has more or less admitted that that was the case. Uh, everybody knew what goal the Americans were pursuing, including Blair, and he has said today in the inquiry that he decided to support them. The issue of weapons is, I repeat, a mere distraction. When Blair says that he forced or encouraged the Americans to go down the United Nations route, what he means is that he encouraged them to use weapons of mass destruction as an excuse for their real goal, which was overthrowing Saddam. So he was in uh, no doubt about the real war aim, and he, supported, and he decided to support it. The problem is, there are two problems. The first is, it's an illegal war aim. It's illegal to uh, attack a country to overthrow its government. It's illegal, by the way, to attack it, to force it to disarm as well. Uh, and secondly, he denied both to the British public and to the British Parliament that that was the war aim. He specifically said the war aim was not regime change. Now, obviously, Blair is giving this uh, important evidence. A lot of media focus is being put on this. But what about Bush? Is it ever likely that he will be held accountable? Will we ever see uh, a war crimes tribunal for George Bush at The Hague, per se? <laughs> Well, uh, the chances of seeing a prosecution of Blair are much greater because, of course, uh, Britain, unlike the United States of America, has signed up to the International Criminal Court. Uh, the I ICC in The Hague could never adjudicate George Bush because it doesn't have jurisdiction over the United States. However, I think it would be quite difficult to envisage a prosecution even of Blair. The problem is that you'd have to prosecute on the crime of aggression. You'd have to prosecute uh, Blair or Bush on the crime of aggression. And that crime, for the time being, does not fall under the jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court. And there's another point which opponents of uh, the war often forget. I'm certainly an opponent, but other opponents of the war often forget 
that unfortunately the British Parliament and of course the uh, uh, American um, Congress voted for the attack on Iraq and it's very difficult to see how a court uh, such as the International Criminal Court could ever prosecute a parliament. Uh, logically it would have to prosecute the British Parliament for having authorized the war because Blair was very careful to seek parliamentary approval before launching the attack and he got that approval unfortunately admittedly on the basis of lies but he got it so a prosecution if there was to be such a thing would I fear have to be a prosecution of the parliament as a whole and that's obviously a very difficult thing to imagine all right John Lachlan director of studies at the Institute of Democracy and Cooperation in Paris thank you very much